Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. I wanted to say thank you to everybody. We reached a thousand subscribers. I, I'd like to thank each and every one of you. I, I never asked for any subscriptions, but I appreciate that people are interested in what I have to say, and, and I do enjoy doing this. It's, it's not about subscriber count. I'm just really looking to help people, but it does say a lot, and I do appreciate it, but let's move on. So today we're taking a look at the CSTC-75. Now I actually have to look at it, CSTC-75, that's correct. It is uh, the latest entrant into the knobbed 75% uh, keyboard game. But this one has a, I mean, it, it really has some, some uh, interesting features. I mean, especially for the price. Um, now, just the PCB by itself, I guess it's kind of standard. Maybe at some point I'll try it out or test it out in other 75% keyboards. I don't know if it'll work, but um, I want to say it's either the IK75 or the NJ80 has the four buttons here. No, it's not the NJ80. Well, one of those does, so who knows? It might work with others, but anyway. Uh, with the kit, basically as we have it here, I have the black kit number one. Um, it sells for $58.90 on their website. Now, I did receive this from them with a significant discount, uh, but I did pay for a portion of it as well. So, um, so today, we're gonna be building this keyboard. I actually, I haven't seen too much out there on it yet, but it seems fairly simple enough. I think uh, we can figure it out. I'm sure I'll have some fun along the way. So if you're ready to join me on the journey of building this 75% keyboard that is open source, it is VIA and VIA, VIAL compatible, VIAL. VIAL is a, the latest firmware. A lot of people are very happy with it. I've only just, I've only grazed it as far as uh, playing with it. I really haven't. I do have a few boards that are VIA compatible, so maybe I'll do a VIAL video. I, I think I should probably do a VIA video as well as a intro QMK video. I'm not really going to do anything too, um, uh, in, too in depth into QMK because that in itself is a entire universe. I mean, because you're getting into programming, you're getting into the C and you know uh, folder structure and, and it, just a whole bunch of things that, that kind of fall outside of the realm of just keyboard hobby. So I wanted to go ahead and let's take a look at what we have in the package. Uh, we do have what looks like a light diffuser for the LEDs here. Um, now I do believe there is a wireless version of this but I did not see it listed on their website. And the reason I say that is because the case has a what looks like a pocket uh, for a magnet and a USB 2.4 dongle. Dongle. All right, so we've got the light diffuser. We've got the knob. Now we won't need this for a minute, so we can keep that out. It actually, nicely enough, comes with tools. Um, I've got to appreciate it when it comes with tools. Uh, we got a pair of tweezers. Uh, I wonder what we'll need this for. Uh, probably to hold the studs because we do have studs. Oh, and um, a plastic spudger. Plastic spudger, which we're going to need uh, to open the case because it's just a press fit with clips. Or it at least appears to be. I know I've got a few screws. Now, there's another reason that leads me to believe that it's got a, a wireless version because this comes with a tiny little switch, but I don't see any holes for a switch here. So, um, there's the port. Yeah, I don't see any spots for a switch. And I don't know, maybe it would go right there. Who knows? Um, as far as the PCB goes, we've got the plate here. It's a PC or polycarbonate plate, um, which honestly, I prefer last exposure. We take the case apart into its two pieces and we can see the spots where we're gonna be installing the gaskets that are included. And we've got three studs going along. Now for this build, 
we're just going to do it stock but I'm definitely going to be coming back to it and doing some modifications so just wanted to open up the case real quick now let's take a look at the uh, PCB real quick looks like we have a nicely quality made PCB we have your indicator LEDs right there where we're going to put that light diffuser and we have an encoder it's firmly attached it appears that they added an extra bit of solder for support which is good um, oh and this is a two-layer PCB because as you notice we really can't see any of the ends yeah this is definitely a two-layer PCB let me see what's the width on it yeah because it looks like it does support screw in stabilizers although we got plate mounted stabilizers I'm definitely going to be coming back to it and installing some plate mount stabilizers because as you can see we've got the holes on the PCB and the PCB is oh, I, think I need to zero it out yeah it is 1.6 yep All right. I was pushing a little bit harder than I should it's 1.6 millimeters thick so if you're gonna get um, screw and stabs uh, for the PCB make sure that they're compatible with 1.6 millimeter because that's what the PCB is all right let's put that back and we've got a switch that we're probably not going to be using I'll just set that off to the side um, like I said at first I'm just going to stick with stock I, I if they're loose I'll put some tape on it that's about all and I'm, I obviously I'm going to loop them up because it would be a sin not to. Um, then it looks like we've got the feet for the bottom of the case. We've got the kick out feet. They give us actual, oh nice, there's actually two, so you're gonna have three different typing angles. I like it when you have choice. So we got the screws, and I believe these are the studs and the screws for the plate to the PCB, if I'm not mistaken, because they're two-sided. And there does seem to be, well, uh, there might be twice many screws that there are studs but we'll see and then we have gasket socks um, actually these aren't the socks these are going to be going in side of the case gaskets all right so the gaskets are built in to the case what what it appears to be yep that's how it goes it's even got a little spot to lock it all right so we'll get into the gaskets in a little bit when we're getting closer to that said we're going to do stock right now and definitely this board um, appears to lend itself to um, modding. So we'll definitely be coming back to that. And when we do, that's when we'll also put on the feet. Right now, let's worry about this part. Let's go ahead and get the stabilizers ready. And I'm gonna be using what I always use stabilizers which is a super lube grease um, it does the trick and it's not very expensive so and don't get me wrong you want to use crytox that no more power to you but it's just uh, what I would consider it a little bit overkill but I mean I guess can't go too much overkill, right? <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna basically get right past the corner and get it with enough grease to yeah. basically just trying to coat the ends of the wire, just past the corner, every little part that's gonna be connecting to or moving and against plastic just don't want too much glob all right now yes yeah, some of you can, might want to uh, paint it on if you want a little bit more uh, assurance that you got it just right Actually, that's right I need to go straight right. it's like I haven't put it to a keyboard together in a minute <laughs> I haven't done much modding in a minute. Been doing a lot of reviewing, and I want to get back into modding. Modding is really, I mean, many parts of this that I enjoy, but it truly is a lot of fun. 
Alright, All right, now we've got the stabilizers lubed. Um, I always uh, end up remembering or thinking about wearing gloves after I do <laughs> lubing of stabilizers, which I should do first and foremost. Um, but, yeah, just clean up your hands. It's all good. Alright, so let's see how well these stabilizers fit on this plate. Oh, alright. I was thinking maybe I was going to have to do a little bit of tape, but no, they are definitely on there. Good. For me, the rule of thumb is, because I mean, sometimes they're all in the same orientation, sometimes some are flipped, is the bar always goes under where there's like a little bit more of a chip taken out, like instead of a straight across. It's kind of like a Tetris missing a block to make a line. And that's the orientation of which the wire for the stabilizer goes. And you want to just get just the just underneath there because you want to make sure the stabilizer goes to where it can clip and you close it. And always a good thing to go back and make sure that this little tab is pushed out. Don't break it, just make sure that it's pushed out. That's a lock. That ensures that the stabilizer. Oh, I forgot to do that side. Nope. Now I just want to jump out of my hand. Let me just push that out. And like I said, these stabilizers are actually, I mean, they're stably on there. We're going to come back. I'm going to replace them with screw in stabilizers, which I think will make a difference. So let's, um, Let's see, I guess the next stage here would be doing the screws for the stabilizer, or for the, um, let me see. So we've got one there, there. Let's see if we can get away with only four. All right. So now we've got four studs, which should be plenty enough. Now, again, we're going stock with this, so I'm not going to be doing any, um, it doesn't come with any uh, gaskets, any any dampening, uh, though, obviously, knowing me, I will come back to this, um, but I do have to schedule it in. <laughs> the keyboard doctor is in. All right, so, how about we now screw these into... PCG. Now let's put in the switches. Now this is north facing, uh, but it is five pin compatible. Always good to support it from behind to make sure your legs are straight. So now we've got the switches in there. The plate is nice and aligned. Um, I truly can't wait to come back to this. I just wanted to um, show the back of the PCB. We've got two rows of downward facing LEDs. So that's why both of the case colors, they both have a black and a white choice. Uh, they both come in this translucent um, case color so they can allow downward facing. Um, I am curious though if this fits in other boards. Now, granted, it this is uh, the C port is not on a daughter board, so and I mean the hole in the case doesn't really seem to me like it allows much space for flexing. But we'll see about that. We'll see about that. 
So now we've got this. Trust me, I'm tempted to just go ahead and start modding it from here, but I want to see what it sounds like stock. Because open source gasket mount, um, granted it doesn't have any dampening, but that's something that we can take care of. But for the price that it sells, and even with, even though I, I hardly do switches and keys unless I'm just kind of forced to, but um, I actually saw their selection, and it was really nice, and I, I ended up picking out, um, not switches, but the keycap set that I'll bring out later once we're built that I thought would look nice on here. So, let's do the gaskets first, and then we'll worry about the feet. All right, this is what I'm doing with the gaskets. I'm putting the smaller ones on the top frame. I think that's where they go. They just the this is a clip for the case, not a, not a clip to hold down the gasket, which I was. I was that's that. That was what my brain turned it into. Because these fit perfect if I do them like this. They're not squished down like they are in the bottom case. Yeah, I think this this makes a lot more sense, especially since there's a groove for it to stick out. Make sure that it's uh, touching that plate and going all the way down. And you'd figure the bigger gasket would be on the bottom because you're pressing down. That's gravity. So, oh, hey, there's another one. All right, that's where this one is. All right, when we're done, this is what it should look like. We've got gaskets. Basically, all of these gaskets are going to match up with gaskets on uh, the top and the bottom, as you can see. Two there, the four on the top, the one on the side, and the four on the bottom. So let's do these first. So that's going to be the diffuser for the light that's on the board. And at this point, it looks like it's just a simple assembly. So we just drop this into place. Make sure the C port is there. All right. And then we take the top case. Actually, I mean, it's light, but it's not as light as I expected it would be. Um, like, it's actually heavier than the next time 75 um, stock. And that was, that's was that been about one of the lightest boards I've had that I actually do like. Once, um, so instead of ordering any switches, I basically just uh, added a keycap set. And I just wanted to stay nice and simple, but... Um, actually saw a line of uh, keycaps that I think they just recently added, the uh, Ghost Judges uh, keycap. So this is what I've got. Uh, they're double shot keys. I got the white on black. And, um, I want to take a look at these keycaps and see how, how nice they are. Or how nice they're not. Nice, clean legend. Easily readable. Um, capitalized just the first letter and we can see that it's a double shot I don't think I've seen this mold marking before hmm let's see what we're looking at one point four millimeter thickness body very nice oh, one point four all the way around all right so these are some, they actually look and feel really nice. Yeah, I mean, this is a, 
It's a nice looking key cap set. Let's go ahead and um, load these up. And here we are with the fully built CSTC 75 from KP Republic. Um, I'm actually quite surprised that, I mean, it doesn't sound perfect by any means, but it sounds better than I thought that it would, you know, just stock. I mean, I, I'm looking forward to tuning this and making it sound. I, I think I can make this keyboard sing. And for the price, I'm... Honestly, it's like uh, last time it was the the James Donkey, the A3. I was, I mean, that's great kit, uh, per key RGB, um, you know, actual you know studs and screws, just solidly built um, PC for a good price. That one pre-built though, oh no, barebone I think was seventy-two dollars. I'm not mistaken, that was good. But this one, I mean, wow. I mean, I, well, I'll let you guys decide, but let me go ahead and plug it in. I guess I probably should have plugged it in while I was building it, but I'll do that when I mod it for sure so we can see the full glow of the... Oh, wow, that's some bright LED. I mean, obviously, the PC plate is acting as a diffuser here, um, but that is some nice... Uh, Solid colors, and then we can scroll through the solid colors. Very nice. Yeah, very nice indeed. And those are some pretty bright LEDs. And then, of course, we've got the ones that are shooting down. I'm sure there's uh, controls for that. Like I said, this is a Via. Um, via and Vial uh, compatible keyboard. Um, it's loaded on top of QMK, but obviously they haven't released the source, and I, I doubt they will. But let's cross our fingers. Maybe they'll change their mind. So anyway, this is a, I mean, a fairly simple kit to put together. Yes, I, I may have not put the studs in the right way, but the plates together. Everything's there. I got the switches in. There's absolutely zero dampening in this kit. So I'm going to go ahead and do the stock sound test with the milky yellows using, um, they are the Ghost Judges white on black keycap set that I really like. And it appears to have keys for every single um, keyboard layout, uh, at least the ones I have, including um, Alice has the split keys. So, uh, and ISO keys and the ISO black and white. It, 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 it's a nice keycap set, I gotta say. Um, I like the metal knob. This is uh, this is gonna be interesting because, I mean, all the other kits come with some some sort of dampening, and I know a couple of them require a little bit of tuning just to get to this point. Now the stabilizers, you know, I just all I did was lube them, but I could definitely tune them. But why bother when I can just install some screw-in stabilizers? This kit was easy to put together, and I, I like it so far. Let's get technical. So today we built out the CSTC75 from KP Republic. It is an open source via vial keyboard. Um, does not have QMK as of yet, but who knows? It MSRP's bare bone for 5890. But when you purchase a keyboard, KP Republic allows you to bundle both switches and keycaps. Um, and they use this keycap set maker, which is Ghost Judges. I have never seen them before, but the keycap set is complete. It looks like it will fit any uh, layout. It even includes split space bars for um, corns as well as uh, Alice layouts. Now, this keyboard is a 75% wired knobbed. 84 key RGB keyboard with also downward facing RGB. 
It also has two sets of legs for a total of three, three typing angles. Now, this keyboard sits, and it sits at default at 23 millimeters as the chin from the top to the surface. And on the back, we're looking at 35 millimeters with a default typing angle of eight degrees. Now, if you were to use the, the center legs, you're gonna bring up the back to 41 millimeters with an 11 degree typing angle. And if you use the final set of legs, you're gonna go up to 49 millimeters on the back with a 14 degree typing angle. Now this keyboard bare bone with nothing in it weighs roughly 145 grams. Fully loaded as it is right now with key cams and switches, it's at 674 grams. All right, well that was a fun little build. Like I said, it was a it was quite easy um, to build. Obviously, I, I had to do some things differently because I didn't have the instructions. Hopefully, it can serve as a guide for you. Um, I am going to be coming back to this keyboard here shortly and modifying it. I think it sounds decent. I mean, it's not amazing, but it sounds pretty decent as it is. Um, stock, like I said, we're using Milky Gatoron Yellow. Uh, and they have been lubed. They also have been broken in roughly 400,000 times. Uh, that basically just takes away the scratch because it doesn't make them like super switches or anything. So uh, it's it's a nice kit. If you want to put something together, you know, hey, I just have the bug. I want, you know, to put it there. This is a good kit to do it with. You're going to learn um, the hot so sockets are and the knob are quite well soldered on. Obviously support hot swap so sockets if you can um, it's going to make a difference but we've got a lot of room here to have some fun uh, whether we do a silicone pour uh, whether we do kill mat i'm actually leaning toward the silicone pour because that way we can still have the the shine the light that the rgb that's uh, downward facing uh, still come through so anyway I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with the sound test, the stock sound test of the CSTC 75. And please, I'd like to know what you guys think. And if there's any particular mod that you'd like me to do when I come back to this keyboard, uh, please uh, share it down in the comments below. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.